welcome or welcome back to the channel by Mwu. I'm Mwu, aka Marianne, and here we talk about everything that I like to creatively work on. Primarily knitting projects, I also throw in a handful of other fun things sometimes, but mostly knitting. <laughs> We're on episode 10, that is absolutely crazy. I feel like it was just yesterday when I was filming that first episode and I didn't really know what the reception was going to be, but here we are 10 episodes later. I wish I had something exciting and fun planned, but honestly, it's just going to be a standard podcast episode. I even think it's going to be like less exciting than normal because I honestly don't have too much going on. The last time I filmed a podcast episode, it must have been like back in mid-November now or something, so it's been almost three months. Quite frankly, I think I thought I was going to get more knitting done, but I don't have that much to show you, but whatever I do have, I will show you. Most of it is new, some of it is old. We'll just get right on into it. The first thing I have to talk about today is actually what I'm wearing, and it's my first finished object, and this is the Robinson Wrap Cardigan by Florence Miller. You can't exactly see it with me sitting, but it's this like crossover wrap top with a little tie detail on the edge, and I adore it. I honestly think it exceeded my expectations in terms of the finished object. I primarily casted it on to be honest because I wanted something stock in it to work on but I'm really really happy with the finished product way more than I thought it was going to be because the way that she had designed it I think it was supposed to be more form-fitting which is not necessarily my style but the yarn that I used created a really really lovely drape which I think gives it a little bit less structure and I think it suits me a lot better. This is a DK weight cardigan wrap styled top that Florence Miller published I think in 2022 or so. She recommends knitting it with the Knitting for Olive Merino held with Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair. I personally ended up doing a non mohair version and made it in the Katina Sita Katina Merino Sita in the color 71, which is this really pretty like sage eucalyptus color. It has a little bit of like white marling in it because the yarn itself is a 48% silk, 52% merino blend. And I love it. I picked it up back in August from my local yarn store when they were doing like their big warehouse sale. And my original plan for the yarn was to do the Myosotis cardigan. I already had the wrap cardigan pattern available and so instead of buying a new pattern I was like I'll just use what I have because they had the same recommended yarn. I think it fits really nicely. It's kind of like a loose tighter fit and surprisingly despite it being like a silk merino blend which I think would maybe fit a little bit better into spring, maybe early fall, I actually really like it for the winter. It's like still really breathable, very light, but because it's like more form fitting than like just like a pullover, it's still really warm. I think it's like the perfect amount of warmth on like a sunny day in the house, especially in my office. It's like a south facing window. And so when the sun's streaming in, it gets really hot. This is like the perfect kind of throw on the top kind of thing. But I really, really adore it. Love the drape, love the color. I think it will pill. I'm not entirely sure how well this yarn will wear. Only time will tell, but yeah, have great things to say about the yarn, great things to say about the pattern. I guess some details about that. I made the smallest size, I believe, maybe size B? One or either the smallest or the second smallest. And I basically followed it to the T minus the like raglan increases on the side. I think I went one or two extra because I don't even remember why, <laughs> but yeah. I more or less followed the pattern to the way she specified. It was really easy to follow. And despite it being knit flat, it was really like soothing to knit because it was like just knitting or just purling. I didn't have to think about crossing things or twisting things or anything. And it knit up fairly quickly. I think I knitted up in like two, three weeks. The other thing I will add to this one, I kind of took a risk and decided to do the sleeves on double pointed needles. I posted this on my Instagram at the time and people were like, what, you like double pointed needles? Yeah, I think I do, <laughs> you know? I don't think I will like to do them for like cable sleeves or whatnot, but for 
just sleeves in the round. I find them way more, I don't know, like, it is finicky because you have to balance four or five needles, but something about it is just neater, in my opinion, than Magic Loop, especially when you're working on, like, small circumference. I still will always prefer Magic Loop or just knitting in the round, like, on a smaller circular needle. But for sleeves, yeah, we we'll definitely use double-pointed needles again. The next finished object that I have for you is a little shawl scarf thing. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name because it's Danish and I know I'm not going to hit this, the right like accent, so I'll put it on the screen here. But it's this really cute triangle shawl. I knit it a little longer than specified by the pattern, uh, but more or less followed the structure. So this was a free pattern by Gurney Pedersen, I believe is the designer name. And when you go to her website and sign up for her newsletter, this is like the pattern she gives. And it's this really pretty like repeating garter stitch slash one by one ribbing triangle shawl scarf thing. The mods that I did to this one was that instead of casting on the recommended number, I think it was like seven or nine stitches, I did 25 because I wanted it to be a little bit longer and less like wide. And I just knit until I ran out of yarn. This was knit in knitting for all of Merino in the color Marzipan held double. It was left over from my Mauricia cardigan. And I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. This was like one of those I casting on for the sake of having something to knit on. I'm not really a small scarf kind of gal, but I was going to go see like the candlelit Taylor Swift tribute with my sister. If you guys don't know what it is, I'm gonna butcher this description, but they basically put like candles all over the place. I think they're electrics for like fire hazard reasons. And they play like string music based off of pop music or different movies. They're often themed. The one that I saw was Taylor Swift. And so they played a whole bunch of her like pop songs through like violin, which was really, really fun to watch. And I wanted a quick, fun thing to work on as I was watching that. So I casted this on because it was, it's a mix of garter stitch and one by one ribbing and the repeating pattern was relatively simple enough that I could just like memorize it quickly and have it on the go. But I really do like the way it turned out. I just don't really know if I'm gonna wear it too much because like I said, I don't really gravitate towards scarves. I've been recently wearing my dicky that I knit last year a lot more because I think it's just easier to manage. Sometimes I find scarves like too busy if that makes sense but I don't know now that I'm wearing it it's kind of cute. So we'll see. Don't have too much to say about it. Would recommend the pattern though if you guys are interested. It's pretty well written. It is free so it's pretty accessible. I think this was in my gift knits video. It was a fast knit. I think I knit it up in like a week. Um, but yeah, despite me not really being a scarf gal, the next finished object is also a scarf shawl. This one's called the Turtle Dove Shawl by Sari Norland. I think it's more of a scarf. Um, I feel like in my opinion, shawls like are ones that you can like drape across your arms, whereas like things that you would wrap around your neck are scarves. But this is a really, really cute cable knit sweater, not sweater, cable knit shawl that Sari Norland published over the course of the month of December. I wanted to do something kind of festive, and so when Sari Norland announced on Instagram that she was gonna host a knit along for this shawl, I was like, I think it'd be fun to like keep up with it weekly because she was publishing it every Wednesday until Christmas. I kind of fell off the bandwagon because it was really fun at the start because your circumference is all, or your diameter, oh my God, your back and forth distance down here is a lot smaller, but as you get towards the center, you're doing way more stitches than at the start. So I eventually kind of fell off the train a little bit as I was getting towards the middle, but I did finish this in December, casted it off on the 31st. But like I said, it's this really beautiful cable knit detailed shawl. I specifically knit this in the Camo tweed. I think it's just camo tweed in the color like 51 or something like that. It's just the red one with a little bit of white flex. I thought it was so cute when I saw it in the store. Kind of gives me like candy cane vibes. And I don't wear red very often, but something about a red scarf spoke out to me. I'm not gonna lie, this is giving very like Christmas vibes with the white, green, and red. This is my first finished cabled object 
And honestly, there's a lot of dog hair on it because the minute I casted it off and blocked it, I tied it around Jube's neck so that she would have something fun to wear because I think the red against her white fur is so cute. And I don't know if she likes wearing it though. Would recommend the pattern. It was really easy to follow. I do think that I would like it if it was like bigger because it only comes in the one size, unfortunately. And just like as a side, I definitely did the bobbles wrong. <laughs> I think they're supposed to be more prominent, but mine are kind of flat. That's okay. Still really cute. Love this yarn too. This yarn is, it's hits DK weight, but it's really light and airy. It was available in my local yarn store, so I was able to pick this up like the minute she announced it, but really, really, really like the way it turned out. I think a mohair version would also be really cute, but I'm trying to, wean myself off of more cable projects because I think I get really excited about them because they're really beautiful and they're kind of fun to knit but sometimes like they I don't want to say kind of they are fun to knit they're just a lot of dedication and take a lot of time and progression is very slow and I'm slowly realizing that I'm a process knitter I like just being actively working on it and sometimes they're sh like a little bit of a slog when you have to work on cabling because this one it genuinely took me like the full month. I was knitting on some other things, but it was like my primary focus project. And had this just been stockinette or garter stitch, it would have been done so fast. But given so many cables, and then on top of that, waiting for the releases, it just took a lot longer. But I still really like it. I still would recommend the pattern if you guys want like a cute little cable scarf. Um, maybe it'd be nice as like a head, head thing. Little Red Riding Hood vibes. Maybe. Alrighty, so moving on into work in progresses. I am gonna separate this into work in progresses that you guys have seen and then new cast on work in progresses. I really wanted to get this done last year. I wanted to wear it for Christmas, honestly, but that didn't happen. A sleeve island hit me hard. But that is my Alder sweater by the Crea Bea. As you can see, I am getting close. I convinced myself to cast on the second sleeve which is like my biggest hurdle because once it's casted on it's like a little less frictiony to work on but I've been working on it I worked on it for like four hours last night and I only got like two inches of sleeve progress this is what I mean by like color work or cabling being really slow which can be a little discouraging but we're close we are so close I knit this in the West Yorkshire spinners oh gosh DK fleece what is it? West Yorkshire Spinners Fleece DK. That's not the full name. I'll insert the full name. It's always a mouthful. I can never remember it, but it's a really beautiful British yarn um, made from blue faced lamb. Are they lamb? Sheep? Sheep wool. And it's so squishy, so soft. And then on top of that, because it's color work, this sweater is so chunky and I am so amped for it to be done. I saw this when Rebecca like published it back in the beginning of fall last year and I knew I wanted to knit it up because it's just this really fun all over like almost star shaped patterning. I love the way that she did the like raglan increases on here she has this like really interesting like kind of i don't know it kind of gives me like a wonder woman logo vibe this yarn like i said is like a really nice it's kind of got that fleece texture it's kind of fuzzy i definitely lost some definition using like the white and the red but i personally really like it i think it gives it kind of a more rustic look i am a little worried about bleeding if any of you guys have experience with this yarn, please let me know if it bleeds. I think it will be fine if I block it in cold water, but I don't think I'll be able to soak it for too long. But I think it definitely needs to be blocked because I think the color work will relax a lot better. And when I did the swatch for this, blocking helped it a lot. And it's it fits. The sleeves are a little short, and I think it could do with a little bit more relaxing. As much as it has been very slow moving, I have been enjoying it. The pattern is a four row repeat, and it's really addictive to knit. There are little like nuances that you have to pay attention to because at certain points, you have to move the beginning of round marker, which feeds into the fact that this is not necessarily a mindless knit, 
and I'm currently working on sleeve decreases, so they require a little bit more mental tracking. That being said, the pattern is really thorough, really well written out. Everything you need is in there. Like she has everything written out as like step by step. It's a long pattern because it's so detailed and I don't remember what bust circumference it goes up to, but it's pretty size inclusive. I think it was like, it goes up to 63 inches after accounting for the ease, which is really, really lovely. I'm personally knitting size two. I technically should be knitting size one bust wise, but my gauge swatch was a little bit smaller than it was supposed to be. I think it was off by like half a centimeter or something like that. And I wanted a little bit more positive ease than what the pattern has written to it. So I opted for the bigger size and I think it was like a good action because as not blocked, it's like a really good fit right now. And I'm thinking I'm gonna get that extra couple centimeters in the ease once it has been blocked. I was gonna say that I was a little worried about the way it fit. I tried it on before the sleeves were casted on but I tried it again this morning and it fits a lot better. So I think it was just something in my mind. One thing I will say is that this, when I casted off my Robinson wrap top, I did the sleeves in an Italian bind off. I don't think I mentioned it, but I knit the sleeves way too long. And so after they blocked out, they were like ginormous. I had to rip them back and it was making me question the Italian cast off method because it's a lot more annoying to unweave. So for this one, in the case that I do have to add more length, because right now it is a little short and I'm hoping that blocking will make it longer, but I'm not entirely sure. I did just a normal stretchy bind off here because I, I ripping out that Italian bind off was not only painfully long, but also like just painful because you spend so long doing it only to rip it out. But yeah, Alder sweater, I'm hoping to cast this off soon. It's my second priority right now because I am working on my project that I will talk about next, but this I hope in the next podcast will be done because I wanna wear it before the winter's over. Side note, I also need to finish it soon because I have two skeins of the yarn that I purchased for it, the West Yorkshire Spinners yarn, um, that if I don't need, I can return them because my yarn local yarn store has like a four month return period as long as the yarn's unused. And so that deadline's coming up in February. So ideally I get this casted off before that so I can determine if I need those two skeins or not. I don't think so because I, I, I should have, before casting on the first sleeve, like weighed how much I used, but I forgot to. So I'm kind of flying blind with this one. I think I have enough, fingers crossed, but I'm not 100%, which is why I haven't returned the yarn yet. Moving on to the new cast on work in progresses. These ones were both casted on the beginning of this year, I wanna say. I was trying to cast on this next project earlier, but I had some yarn issues, not necessarily issues, just like not yarn situations that kind of prevented me. So this didn't get cast on until the beginning of the year. But this is my Lily blouse by The Knitting Deer. I am test knitting size one for her and it's this glorious blouse with cable lace detailing all over. It's got like a cross in it. It's so cute. I'll insert a photo here. And I am so thankful that I was selected to knit this. I love it now that it's casted on and I'm like actually actively working on it, but I had a hard time starting it to be honest with you because I applied for this test knit kind of on a whim. I saw the post about it and I was like, that is such a gorgeous top. I really, really wanted to test knit it. So I applied and I got it very thankfully, but I don't think I realized what I was in for until I actually got the pattern and was sitting down to like do the swatch. So for starters, the recommended yarn is two strands of mohair held double, knit on four millimeter needles. Now, I don't know if it's that Lucia has a really tight knitting like tension, but I could not hit gauge on four millimeter needles. So I first did a swatch on four millimeter. It was way too big, like way too ginormous. Then I was like, okay, so I'll go down a size to 3.5 millimeters. Still too big, guys. <laughs> 
I ended up having to cast it on on three millimeter needles and I had originally done it in mohair. This is my original version and the Sandus Garn Tin Silk Mohair in the color Blueberry. Love this color. Honestly, it's like such a gorgeous, vibrant purple and I loved it. But once I realized this was now not going to be knitting on four millimeter needles and it was gonna be fingering weight, lace work, in mohair on three millimeter needles. I think I kind of started to panic because I was having a really hard time seeing the work I was doing with this dark mohair. And I also know that typically when you do cables and lace, they show up better on light ones. And I was just starting to second guess this whole like test knit because I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna wear the mohair. I'm not a huge mohair girl. I know my last test knit was in mohair and quite frankly, I don't wear it as much as I would like to. I still really like the pattern and the prod, like the end product, but mohair is just like not something that I gravitate towards. I would rather non mohair version. Hence why like in many cases, I will take mohair out of a project. But nevertheless, I was like starting to panic. I didn't know if this was the right option for me, but I had already committed to this test and I didn't want to just drop out. So I ended up deciding to do a non-mohair version and just fingering weight instead of mohair held double. I know that when they you do test knits, they like to know like the yardage that you used and I didn't know if she wanted like mohair specific yardage. She said it was okay to do a fingering weight version um, to kind of broaden the types of variety of yarn that you could use. And so I ended up selecting this Amelia and Philomene's Madame Penelope in the color Eugenia, which is this really pretty light purple. It's kind of tonal. It's got ever so slight subtle elements of like pink in it, like really, really subtly. I really like it. It's gorgeous. And that's what I've been knitting this in. It looks like this right now. It looks a little small. Once I block it, it will stretch out a lot. So it should fit, but it's this really beautiful cross on the front, or eventually it will be. I haven't joined yet. And I am beyond stoked. It's such a clean pattern. Like the way she has you join at the like back and the front, it's like pretty seamless. I don't know if I did a great job, but in theory, it would be so seamless. It's gorgeous. I am so excited to have this finished. It's been moving fairly slowly, but also fairly quickly, if that makes sense. Um, I'm like surprised about the amount of work that I've been doing despite not starting until maybe like a week and a half ago, but also I still have a lot more to do. <laughs> I'm not sure if this color is going to look great on me. I'm worried that it might wash me out, but that's a later problem, right? <laughs> I am now on the other side of the hump. It was kind of discouraging to do three swatches, but I'm really happy with the final product. I'm glad that I trusted my gut and decided to switch away from the mohair. That being said, I really want to do something with this blackberry color because it's just such a gorgeous color. I'm thinking, I know I said I'm kind of steering away from cable, but I think a cable sweater, like just like a plain, like simple twist cable, pullover sweater would look really good in this. Okay, the next work in progress that I have is one that I casted on in desperation of injecting a little bit more stockinette into my life. I still wish I went with like a stockinette in the round versus stockinette flat because it's a knit flat piece, but it is a project for my husband. So disclaimer here, Ryan, if you're watching, please click out and or jump to this timestamp here because this is a surprise and you're not supposed to know. I will give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, so for everybody else, this is the Eva Cardigan by Petite Knit. And like I said, knitting this for my husband, this is the size small, and I opted to do it in Sandus Garn Sunday Health Double. So the color up here is Almond, which if you guys are familiar with it, it's because I use that as my main color in the Friday tee by Petunet that I knit last spring slash summer. And then the main color here is, I believe it's called Into the Woods or Out of the Woods or something like that. And it's this really pretty, I don't think the camera's gonna pick it up, but brown with like a green undertone to it. I love it. It's kind of really fun and like, like it looks brown and it is brown, but it's kind of got like a, 
I don't know how to describe it, like a cool green undertone. It really reminds me of Bark on Trees, so I think the naming of it is like perfection. And I love it a lot more than I thought I would. I believe Petite Knit is discontinuing this color or Santa's Garn is discontinuing it. The yarn store that I purchased it from, usually they put like discontinued colors on sale. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is kind of like leaving, but I really like it. I was worried that it was gonna not work well with like the kind of almondy off yellow color here. But I think because it has like that green undertone, they actually pair really nicely. And I'm really, really, really liking how this is turning out. So I, like I said, I'm doing the Eva cardigan. It's Petite Knit's really oversized version. It's very similar to the Champagne cardigan as well as the, I wanna call it, it's the Monday cardigan. I don't remember if that's the right name, but they all have similar structures. This one has raglan increases, but it also kind of has like a saddle shoulder on the back, which I opted to do instead of just the straight raglan one, which is what the Champagne cardigan is. And Okay, something that I don't think this is a petite knit specific issue, but because I was knitting this for my husband, I was having the issue that, okay, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go with bust. It says it's supposed to have like 20 to 30 centimeters of positive ease. He was like, I think 90 centimeters around the chest. So I was like, okay, that is a small. But when I was knitting it, I realized that that's the bust and not the shoulders. And so because guys typically have broader shoulders, I was really pushing it that I think it's supposed to be a drop shoulder, at least in the sample that Petite Knit has, like the shoulder line goes down onto the arm. But when I had him blindly try this on, I had to close his eyes so I could like fit it onto him and see how it was fitting. It like is hitting him square on the shoulders, which I think is fine. In retrospect, I wish it was a little bigger. I and like wish I, did the size medium then, but I don't have enough yarn to do a size medium. So we're just gonna push through. I'm hoping that once I block it, it will bloom a little bit so that it will have a little bit more drape. And because it's gonna be fairly heavy, like it's like a DK weight cardigan, I'm hoping that a little bit of that weight will help with the like growth of it. I was bad, I didn't actually swatch for this one or block it. So I think it should be fine. I have done petite patterns in the past and I always hit gauge. And then after I've had like a, enough to do like stockinette to do a counting gauge swatch, I hit the size, the recommended gauge that she has without being blocked. So I suspect once it's blocked, it will be a little bit bigger. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that works out for me. I think it's fairly obvious by how much I've gotten done that I'm doing a striped version. And this was heavily inspired by a random Pinterest photo that I saw that I would insert here. And it was like a, it was similar colors. It was like an off white with like a green brown. Um, like a, I think it was a little bit more army green than like this one's a little bit more brown colored. And I really liked the way that the like top of the yoke was done in like that solid white or cream color. And then it was like really small, stripes of the cream white and then the trim around the excess around the cuffs as the bottom and around the like cardigan amount amount around the cardigan like neckline was all done in neck cream so that's my goal to kind of recreate that kind of vibe i'm really enjoying it right now i just put the arm sleeve holes on rest and so it should be fairly straightforward to just do back and forth shocking it for the next little bit i'm gonna have to kind of manage my yarn i'm pretty sure i got enough but because i didn't exactly know how much of one versus the other i was going to need for a stripe i kind of guessed and so fingers crossed it works out i was hoping to do like a double knit edge band. I don't know if I'm going to do buttons because I know the Eva cardigan has buttons originally, but I think I'm just going to do like an open cardigan. I don't think I'll have enough to do a double edged, double banded. What is it called? When it's like you do, I think it's like a double edged button band. So if not, I'll just do the recommended like one by one that she has in the pattern. But really been enjoying this it's kind of been my go-to when i'm just like frustrated with all the like amount of thinking i have to do with my knit patterns and i'm hoping it will come up fairly quickly i have been making good progress stripes are always fun in that aspect because 
you always have like a goal, you know, you're like, oh, I, I'm just going to get to the next stripe and then the next stripe and now I'm three stripes in. All right, we are getting near to the end. I just have a couple of yarn acquisitions. So when I purchased the Santa Scar and Sunday for that Eva cardigan, I just picked up a couple other yarns because they were calling out to me. This first one here is Quince & Co's Chickadee yarn in the color bird's egg and it's this really pretty like robin blue i am obsessed with this color my plan for this is to knit up the colette pullover by sorry norland it screams spring to me i'm trying to incorporate a little bit more color and i think this blue is going to be a great like i have a vision of that sweater in blue and it just warms my heart it like call spring out to me i know we're a little early but i'm so excited to cast that on i want to thank all of the instagram voters because i was between doing a this one or a cream canvas colored one and you guys voted for blue and i'm really really happy with it i was a little anxious when i was asking you guys because i wasn't 100 percent sure what the blue was going to be like that's always a risk that you're going to have when you order yarn online and no, I'm, I'm beyond obsessed with this. I think this color is gorgeous. I can't wait to knit with it. Yeah, because I, I have been disappointed by yarn before. The other thing that I picked up too was a skein of the Earl Grey Fiber Company's Ribo Singles in the color Vintage. So this color is actually a exclusive color to the yarn store I picked it up, which was the Art of Yarn, which is a BC yarn store. I've ordered from them a whole bunch. I love their selection. I do find that their prices are like a little bit more expensive than other places for some reason, but hasn't stopped me, so clearly it's working. And yeah, I thought that this pink would be really great for another muscle burrow. So my plan is to do a muscle burrow in this pink. I don't know, actually, no. Maybe it's like too close to my skin tone. I'll think about it because all of my muscle burrows all of mine. I only have one, but it's like a dark purple and my winter jacket is dark purple and or army green and I wanted something a little bit brighter. So maybe this one, maybe not. I don't know. Do you think this pink will look nice guys? Please let me know in the comments below because now I'm feeling a little uncertain. <laughs> That's all I have for you guys. All the other projects that I have as whips right now haven't been shown because I haven't really been working on them. Most notably the Arctic Lights. I was really excited to cast that on, but I had to put it on hold when I started my test knit as well as the Turtle Shawl Dove. Turtle Dove Shawl. Um, because I just could not handle that many cable knit projects at the same time. Personally, it was a little too much. I hope you guys are doing great. I hope the first couple weeks of 2024 have been treating you well. Let me know what you guys are working on right now because it's been a while since we caught up and if you guys are looking forward to the winter because we are in it now. At least where I live in Canada, we are fully in it. My brother-in-law texted us the other day and said that it was like minus 34 degrees Celsius over where he lives in Calgary or like near Calgary. So yeah. Winter's here, man, and I am starting to think about spring. <laughs> I think that's just how it rolls. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.